right. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Again, welcome to our afternoon study. Um, we're all excited uh, for for not only the day, but what's going to happen later um, with the wedding uh, approaching of uh, Brother Stefan and uh, Sister Britt. Yeah. Um, so. But we want to be diligent and, and continue on in, in what we normally do. Um, so we come upon this interesting chapter, uh, chapter seven of, of the book of Numbers. Remember, two weeks ago, uh, we went through chapter six um, and we went through in full detail um, understanding the law of the Nazarite, the Nazarite vow. Um, something interesting happened at the end of that chapter where we saw the priestly blessing and we saw the unconditional favor of Yah. We also saw the protection and the grace in that blessing. Yahuwah bless you and keep you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. And what a great way to confirm what Yah wants from us, for us, so that we can be that beautiful picture to the world. Um, but now in chapter seven, which um, is a very long chapter. Matter of fact, this is the longest chapter in I believe the longest chapter in Torah, but definitely most certainly the longest chapter in the book of Numbers. Um, and we see the, the, the offerings of the leaders. And we're gonna look at these, these offerings um, and them, them, them all being identical. I think it's, it's still something that we, sh we need to read through and we just need to understand um, so we'll just kind of read through and explain, um, and, uh, just enjoy it. It's kind of, kind of like a fun chapter to me, you know, when I read through it. Um, so let's look at it. Um, there's some things that we're going to pull out in regards to the direction, the direction and the instruction. And we're going to see, um, how these instructions in some cases um, later in scripture weren't adhered to and, and as to why Yahuwah's vengeance and anger prevailed because of disobedience. So let's get into it. Um, I'll start off reading. reading. Um, Numbers chapter seven, starting in verse one, says this. Now it came to pass when Moses had finished setting up the tabernacle that he anointed it and consecrated it and all its furnishings and the altar and all its utensils. So he anointed them and consecrated them. Then the leaders of Israel, the heads of their father's houses, who were leaders of the tribes and over those who were numbered made an offering. So we have here all of the tribes that were before mentioned, all of the leaders of the father's houses that we mentioned before and, and, and those that were numbered that we went over in the earlier chap chapters. And they made an offering, verse three, and they brought their offerings before Yahuwah. Here are the offerings, six, covered carts and 12 oxen, a cart for every two of the leaders and for each one an ox. And they presented them before the tabernacle. Verse four, then Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, accept these from them that they may be used in doing the work of the tabernacle of the meeting and you shall give them to the Levites to every man according to his service. So Moses took the carts and the oxen and gave them to the Levites. 
two carts and four oxen he gave to the sons of Gershon. You remember the sons of Gershon were the ones that were in charge of carrying all of the fabric and the cloth. So he gave them carts to carry the fabric and the cloth according to their service. And four carts of oxen he gave to the sons of Merari. And remember Merari had a charge to be um, responsible for all of the building and the building uh, framework, right? So they use carts uh, to carry everything uh, that they were responsible for. Um, and then it says, under the authority of the sons of Ithamar, the sons, the son of Aaron, the priest, but to the sons of Kohath, he gave none, because theirs was the service of the holy things which they carry on their shoulders. So we see that the Ger Gershonites were given a cart, right, to carry um, their fabric, um, the all the cloth, and everything that they were responsible for. We see that the Marianites were in, who were in charge of the building framework. Um, the, the, everything that they needed to, to hold the structure of the tabernacle, they were also given carts. But to the Kohathites, who were in charge of carrying the ark, the table of showbread, they were not given carts. <laughs> they were given poles in which to carry on their shoulders. And, and, and why is this important? Who remembers um, where in scripture this comes out to play as disobedience for, what, what, for, for this very instruction? Anyone? Yeah, something to do with touching the sacred thing with uh, the uh, the ark, right? Yeah, uh, that wasn't that the one of the main things is the so you didn't have to touch it. Absolutely, absolutely. So in Second Samuel chapter six, we see that the the ark was being brought to Jerusalem, and there was. Um, something that happened that wasn't even supposed to happen because of this aforementioned instruction. Carrying it on your shoulders on poles gave a sturdiness to it, gave a more um, uh, structured way and safe way to carry uh, those things. Um, but let's look at let's look at what happens. Um, let's start in verse one. Uh, Second Samuel chapter six, verse one. Somebody else want to read? If not, I'll read. Second Samuel chapter six, verse one. I'll read. Then again, Daoud gathered together left Tav all the children, men of Yisrael, 30,000. And David, or Daoud, arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baale, uh, Yehuda, to bring up the um, front thence a left Tav, the ark of Elohim, whose name is called by the name of Yehuah Savaot that dwells between the Kirim, or the Kirim. How far do you want me to go? Um, to verse nine, stop at nine. And they set 
Aleph Tav, the Ark of Elohim, upon the new cart and brought it out of the house of Avin Nabda that was in Givda. I should be probably reading the other one, probably easier. <laughs> I want to see the, uh, uh, see the, uh, the Aleph Tavs in here, but let me read it from this version. It might have yeah, been, been a dad. <laughs> All right, where was I at here? In three? Yeah. Uh, this one doesn't seem to... Okay. Anada, which was on the hill, and Uzzah and Ayo, sons of Aina, were leading the new wagon. And they brought it from the house of uh, Aina, which was on the hill and with the Ark of Elohim, and Ayo was walking before the Ark. And Dawid or David, and all the house of Yisrael were dancing before Yahuwah with all instruments of fir wood and with lyre and with harps and with tambourines and with uh, sistrums and with cymbals. And when they came to the threshing floor of Naon, Uzzah reached out towards the Ark of Elohim and took hold of it and of the oxen stumbled. And the wrath of Yahuwah burned against Uzzah, and Elohim struck him there for the fault, and he died there by the ark of Elohim. And Dawai was pleased with Yahuwah, had broken out against Uzzah, and he called the name of that place Peretz Uzzah until this day. And Daud was afraid of Yahuwah on that day and said, how shall the ark of Yahuwah come to me? Perez Uzzah to this day means outburst against Uzzah. So we see clearly that the mistake was putting the, the ark in the new cart. They were supposed to carry it, tilted, Uzzah put his hand out and touched it, disobeying Yah's instruction um, for the Kohathites. So just wanted to kind of point that out so we can see a clear understanding of the necessity, the severity um, to not only obeying Yah's laws, but understanding and his instructions. So um, let's continue with our reading. Uh, we stopped in verse 10. Um, I'll continue. Now the leaders offered the dedication offering for the altar when it was anointed. So the leaders offered their offering before the altar. For Yahuwah said to Moses, they shall offer their offering one liter each day for the dedication of the altar. And the one who offered his offering on the first day was Nashon or Nashon the son of Aminadab, Aminadab, Aminadab from the tribe of Judah. His offering was one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, and one silver bowl of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering one gold pan of 10 shekels, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb in its first year, as a burnt offering, one kid of the goats, as a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs in their first year. This was the offering of Nashan, the son of Amenadab. 
So Amedadad from the tribe of Judah uh, gives this offering. Now, each of these offerings we're going to read are going to be identical. It's, it's basically saying the same thing for each tribe. <laughs> and it goes through all of them. That's why, you know, the chapter is so long. Um, so it's repetitive, but we'll continue to read through. And, it, you know, it's interesting to note that, um, you know, Yah takes, you know, great interest and, and shows great detail of what we give from the heart. You know, this is recorded for, for all the generations to read, to see what happened on this day. And I think it's here for us to see as well. So um, even though it's repetitive and it seems like the same thing over and over, it's recorded for our, for our benefit. Um, so we stopped in verse 18. Uh, would someone else like to pick up? You can read. So there's one, two. You can read the next three days. Stop at verse 36. So 18 uh, to 36. All right. No hands. I'll continue to read. No problem. Teresa, read. Oh, okay. I, I can read. I uh, start at 18. Yes. Okay. And read through what? Which one again? Uh, you can stop at six days. So read the second day, the third day, and the fourth day. Okay. On the second day, Nathaniel, the son of Zur, prince of Issachar, died did uh, did offer uh, the weight there whereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for meat offering one spoon of gold of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goat for a skin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offering, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was, this was the offering of Nathaniel, the son of Zerah. On the third day, El, 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 Elbi, Elba? Eliad. Eliad, thank you. The son of Helion, prince of the children of Zebulun, 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 did offer his offering was one silver charger, and weight whereof was was an hundred and thirty shekels of one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekels of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering one gold spoon of 10 shekels full of increase, one young bullock, incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of, of the goats for a skin offerings, for a sacrifice of peace offering, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs, of the first year, uh, this was the offering of Elip, the son of Helan. You want me to stop at the third day or go to the fourth? You can stop there, you can stop there. Okay. So, so we see actually, um, you know, as we're reading, we see the tribes mentioned, we see the names mentioned. You know, I just wanted to kind of point out that this was, you know, imagine this being read aloud, 
you know, later and how it would be kind of um, a form of pageantry or ceremony or, or ritual, if you will, for what they went through and what they gave, but also that they would be excited and, and maybe even proud of their family and their tribal heritage, you know, to be mentioned this way, to be mentioned in scripture as, it, as it's read throughout history. Um, and we see what was given on these days. So kind of view it in that sense as we read through, um, but it's here for our benefit as well. Anyone wanna add anything to what we're saying? It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory not much to really dig into um but you know it's part of the course that we're going through to get to get through torah and we want to leave no stone unturned praise god all right let's continue i'll pick up in um day four. Oh, lydia you want to read yeah i could read. yes okay. i could you can read a couple days, uh, read day four and day five. All right, um, verse 30. On the fourth day, Eliezer, the son of Shedeur, prince of the children of Reuben, did offer. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Eliezer, the son of Shedeur. On the fifth day, Shalom Yel, the son of Suri Shaddai, prince of the children of Shimon, did offer. His offer was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both full of fine flour, mingled with oil for an oblation one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice a peace offering, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Shalumiel, the son of Seri Shaddai. Praise God, praise God. You want to pull anything out there? I'm just messing with you. <laughs> you know, and these names, if you remember when we when we were reading through the first couple chapters, these are the names of the heads of the tribes of the armies. So there is marching. I can see almost kind of a parade of sorts going on if we can visualize it in the way that they went in order according to their tribes and the heads of their father's houses. So um, probably a beautiful scene and something great to commemorate. I mean, we can clearly see why Yah put this here for, for that purpose. Um, Sister Yahara. Yes, and I agree with you, brother. There's so much um, imagery um, here, um, so much of the meaning of which we're actually trying to regain the understanding of um, because it was lost um, due to, you know, the Hellenization of scripture and um, us really losing um, the insight, but that's you know what we're um, what we're regaining. Um, going back to Second Samuel um, chapter six and the whole uh, story of Uzzah and the cart. Um, you know, I think one of the things that you know stands out to me about that um, goes to the fact 
of imagery and we don't always understand all of what um, is being said to us. We don't always understand, I apologize for that. We don't always understand the depths of what is being said to us in um, the instructions that are given. And so in the instructions that were given for the carrying of the Ark of the Covenant and how very expressly the instructions were that uh, the Ark was to be covered, to be carried uh, on poles on our shoulders. I don't know, whenever I've read that, what um, has stuck out to me is the fact that it's a picture of, um, okay, when we start with the Ark uh, being uh, very expressly instructed to be made out of acacia wood um, and then covered in gold, it's looking at, we're, we're seeing a picture of the wood being the humanity and the gold being um, the presence of the Almighty. And we're seeing a, a picture, not only of Messiah, but also his presence um, in our lives and how um, we carry his presence, uh, the anointing of his presence on humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that is something we carry on our shoulders, so to speak, our heads. Um, and it's not something that we can order with our hands. So when Uzzah uh, touched the ark so as to steady the presence of Elohim, that was not acceptable. You know, that was not an acceptable uh, representation of uh, the handling of the anointing. It's not something that we handle, it's something we carry. I don't know if that's a. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I agree. I think I think you're 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 combining you know the ultimate picture uh, of of what's saying because you know Messiah says the volume of the book is written of me so that everything points to him right so so ultimately what you describe is the image of what the ultimate picture of is. But I think there's something um, that we that we have to also understand is that there's an immediate understanding for what actually is happening at that present moment. Um, it's it's not you know you know Uzziah's disobedience was touching it. Period is the disobedience of carrying it in a cart versus carrying it on poles on their shoulders. Um, because I think you started off when you started off and you said, we don't always understand the instruction. You know, I, I, that, I see that play out, you know, with our children. You know, if, you know, my wife or, or I tell, tell, tell them something, you know, specifically our youngest, he doesn't always understand why. And sometimes he'll ask why. But the point is to trust and be obedient to the one given the instruction. Absolutely. And, and, and know that their best interest is at hand and you will understand as we explain. Bye, bye. <laughs> right, so we, 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 can, we can also explain it to them, but sometimes the lesson in being obedient, just do what I told you to do. We'll talk about why later, you know, is, is sometimes Yah's um, instruction as well. They'll take care. Oh, absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly that we obey whether we understand or not. And so therefore, um, in his disobedience, whether he understood or not, um, he was then punished. However, um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that um, on this side of the death, burial and resurrection, we're, we're at least in a position to be able to see that um, there was there was purpose 
and we already, we, we know that there's purpose in all of his instruction. Whether we understand the purpose or not, um, he has purpose. He doesn't just say things. He doesn't just give instructions for the sake of instruction. He's painting a picture. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Go ahead. Oh, okay, I lost, I lost your feet. Um, he's painting a picture. And, and his picture that he's painting is, is going to be fulfilled. And so, um, you know, just as Messiah said, we do things uh, for the sake of, um, of righteousness. When, you know, he had the whole thing with the discussion with um, uh, John the Immerser, John the Baptist. And he said, you know, do this because we're fulfilling all righteousness. We're obeying instruction, okay? He's painting a picture with everything. So whether we understand it or not, we're, um, that was a picture that on this side of the death, burial, and resurrection, we can perhaps better see. Um, you know, the reason it was very important for them, you know, um, to you know, fulfill that imagery. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I was agreeing with you. Um, what, what I was explaining was the difference in understanding the full picture, like you said, on this side of the resurrection. But what I want us to do for like, you know, a lot of times, and I'm not saying you did this, but a lot of times what happens is people jump to the big picture and they miss what's happening immediately in the passage that we're reading because there's always a connection in the Brit. They wanna to jump to that. You didn't do that, but I'm just saying, I'm pointing to first, the contemporary understanding of what we're reading, what it meant to them, and then ultimately what it means. So I, I agree with you and I was, I was just pointing out the other side, that's all. But yes, absolutely. absolutely. You you understand? Yes, I agree. Okay. Yes, I, I agree. Cool, cool. Um, but yeah, I think I think Yah wants us to, he wants us to, even in our obedience, when we don't fully grasp why, he always wants us to gain understanding for what for what we're doing. You know, he doesn't want us to not be mindful, not have the wisdom, not have the knowledge that he offers. That's why he continually tells us to seek it, if we can't find it, then to ask, um, because he wants to give it to us. So we always have to keep that in mind. He doesn't just want us to blindly do things, but he wants us to trust him, whether we know the reason or whether we understand why. So um, there's a difference, but yes, absolutely. Great, great insight, Sister Yahara, I appreciate you taking the time to, to, to look at what's what we're reading here and to spell out those things as you see them in the ultimate picture. We, we definitely need to always do that. Brother Rick. I got a question. Maybe you can help me understand. You know, I, it seems as though they all had the same understanding about what they were to offer. Mm -hmm. As far as how many, you know, they all did the same. And, um, you know, I wonder why it is that they were as certain animals were certain numbers, you know, uh, and at certain ages. And, you know, I know offering has to do with a lot of that, but I'm just, even during those, during the feast, I, always, I often wonder why it was certain amount of animals, uh, certain types of animals were different numbers, you know. Um, in, 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 in this particular one, they're talking about his, his offering uh, was one silver dish and they all seem to have the same and then it goes on to the same it's like just a repeat kind of thing that each one offered so i wonder i don't remember if we we we, we seen anything written about this about what was required that they all knew you know that, that it was required and man that's a lot of animals if you think about it you know um that were being used at that point but i don't know i just wondered why they use certain amount of animals you know, which why he chose certain ones, that, certain quantities, you know what I'm saying? That type of thing. 
Yeah, I think I think most of the offerings um, that we see here are going to be based on what was previously mentioned in scripture. So when we have, you know, the offerings in Exodus, um, we'll, you're going to see the exact same the exact same offerings given in the exact same way. Um, uh, I don't know if I have an answer as to why uh, they numbered the, the the animals and why the gold why the silver, but um, these were based upon what we read, you know, of the offerings um, in Exodus. Um, if you read like, a, here's a passage, Exodus 30, verse 13 says, this is what everyone among those who are numbered shall give. And then it gives the specifics, half shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. Um, which was 20 garaz, a half shekel shall be the offering to Yahuwah. Everyone, including among those who are numbered from 20 years old and above, shall give an offering to Yahuwah. So each instruction had a specific offering that they were supposed to give. Um, so this would have been a specific instruction based upon what Yah told Moshe for them to give. Um, that's all I have. Anyone else can chime in if they know me differently. All right. All right, we're on the sixth day then. Um, verse 42, anyone wanna pick up? We're like halfway, we're only halfway done. We're in verse 42, Sister Diane. Uh, Shalom, Ms. Baca. I think I'm a little off balance here this, right now. I don't think you can see me, but okay. Um, we're going to read. You said you're off balance. Uh, yeah, what I mean is that uh, I'm supposed to be showing my face, but it isn't showing. So oh, oh, I, put a, I put a little gadget on here. <laughs> And anyhow, uh, technology, right? Okay, but I'm just going to go ahead and read then. So we're at uh, 42. Verse 42. You can read um, read the 6th, the 7th, and the... Read the 6th and the 7th day. Okay. Um, I'm reading from the uh, New KJV. On the 6th day... Um, Elisaph, the son of Duel, leader of the children of Gad, presented an offering. His offering was one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, and silver bowl of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering one gold pan of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one kid of the goats as a sin offering, and as a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs in their first year. This was the offering of Elisapheth, the son of Duel. On the seventh day, Elishama, the son of Amiyat, leader of the children of Ephraim, presented an offering. His offering was one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, and one silver bowl of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of flour mixed with oil as a grain offering, one gold pan of 10 shekels full of incense, one young uh, bull, one ram, and one male lamb in his first year as a burnt offering, one kid of the goats as a sin offering, and as the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, 
five male goats and five male lambs of their first year. This was the offering of Elishama, the son of Ambihud. Praise God. <clears throat> um, again, repetitive. I don't know if you see anything specific you wanted to pull out. Um, but um, more, oh, go ahead. Well, yes. Um, while reading this, first of all, uh, we know that Yahuwah is a Yahuwah of order, plain and simple. Everything he does is uh, ordered. And as Elder Rick brought out just a few moments ago, um, that uh, they had to be a certain number of everything. And not only were there a certain number, each one of the tribes, as we just about, we can just about see the pattern, gave the same thing. Uh, no one tribe gave any more or less than the other tribe. And of course, we see that it took place, you know, it was 12 days, <laughs> you know, representing um, each one of the, the tribes. And we spoke of imagery earlier. So this must have really been um, quite a sight to see and to experience that each one of these uh, tribes were bringing in these offerings of the same um, each day. And not only that, but not only what they brought and the fact that they brought every day, but it's the manner in which it was presented. Um, we were reading in Leviticus, the meaning of these different offerings. I didn't go that far into looking again, Brother Rod, into uh, which each, each of these offerings meant, but I'm sure if we were to do that, we would still see a, another order pattern. Um, but what we do see is that they are presented in like manner, meaning there was the meat offering first, there was the burnt offering second, the sin offering was given third, followed by the peace offering. And each one of them presented them in the exact same fashion. So I just thought that was fascinating um, in terms of um, how, how the splendor of all of this and the fact that they were all ordered. And um, I went back and got the... Um, you know, we're, we're reading shekels and whatnot. Say, for instance, uh, let's see, I read, uh, we know that the uh, the 130 shekels, I believe, is like three and a half pounds. Uh, let's see, 130 shekels of the, uh, and then uh, 70 shekels um, was a, a one and three quarter pounds. You know, so when when we when we go back and convert these shekels into pounds, or you know, the weight that we are accustomed to, it gives us a different, uh, an additional imagery of uh, exactly what was taking place, and not only the what, but you know what it looked like and how much. So, um, I thought it was interesting. Yes, that each one of them gave the same thing, and the fact that they offered meat burnt sin and the peace offerings in that order each time. Amen. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm glad you you brought out very, very, very important to understand um, what Sister Diane was saying um, in regards to the meanings, you know, of, you know, the offerings, you know, because as we looked, you know, at them, you know, when we were going through Leviticus, we saw that, you know, the burnt offerings uh, um, alluded to an understanding of dedication of self, right? Dedicating yourself. This was commitment with the, with the meal offering or the meat offering being the same as the grain is the consecration. Um, that would be oats and barley. Um, the communion part was the peace, right? The peace offering. 
um, signifying salvation. Um, and then we had the sin and the trespass offering, which represented the cleansing, um, sin being the satisfaction of Yah's wrath, the propitiation for the wrath was the sin offering. You were saved from the wrath, right? So that was the cleansing, the trespass, the restoration for all to turn back to um, the Father. Um, so, and then we had, you know, the different uh, offerings, the bull, the goat, the sheep, turtle dove, the pigeon, um, and all of those were to make provision for all people to be able to um, give their offerings as well. So just wanted to point that out. Interesting to know um, what those offerings mean um, as we read through. And remember, they're going in order of the marching. They're, they're going in order of the way they would be marching into war uh, and the way this is done. So I'm picturing a parade of sorts, like we said, a pomp and circumstance. I mean, a pomp and, is it a pomp and circumstance? Well, that's a song, but that's a song you play for graduation, pomp and circumstance, everybody walking in order, right? So that's that's kind of what I see. Um, Sister Diane and then Sister Olivia. It's interesting, Elder Rod, you mentioned, um, you gave a definition for the peace offering, you know, it's been for salvation and that the peace offering was the last of the four offerings they gave, the meat, the burnt, the sin, and then the peace offering being salvation, which um, I think is very, um, you know, in other words, when we do these things that these offerings represent, and even this, and, and the sin offering being next to the last, you know, there's a sin offering and then there's a peace offering. We give an offering for our sin as then, you know, forgiveness and receiving, you know, forgiveness for our sins. Um, uh, receiving forgiveness for our sins is part of our salvation. You know, it's part of what Yahuwah does for us. We ask for forgiveness. Um, and of course, in the Old Testament, you know, they, of course, they repented. Well, I would hope they did, but they offered this sin offering and he would honor it. So, and in part of him honoring it, uh, we receive our salvation. So it just, it just kind of makes a lot of sense for that to be the last one. Um, you know, as if he says, okay, well, I'm recognizing a salvation for your tribe or, you know, that group of people that were being represented that particular day. So I think that's that's really something too in terms of the order. Thank Absolutely, you. you can't have you can't have peace with Yah until you have the peace of Yah <laughs> that protects you from the wrath that sin produces. Right. So first, the peace of Yah, which is given um, once you recognize that you are a sinner and that you need salvation. Now you have peace with Yah because you have believed in the mediator, Yahushua Messiah, died for your sin, was buried and rose again. Now you have peace with Yah. So absolutely, praise Yah. Sister Lydia. I wanted to point out that um, I noticed that most of the animals being off Where's sister? Am I okay? I'm yeah, sorry. I me? was trying to put your hand down and I'm, I muted you by accident. You muted me. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if uh, more people noticed that most of the offerings were the, of the male gender. Um, and I wonder if that was twofold. Um, you're not allowed to give offer the mother and the baby. So if you, if the mother was pregnant, you would never, you might not know. And so you're not supposed to offer them at the same time. And two, that's also to offer more reproductive, the animals that are able to reproduce to keep them alive, where the males, you only need a few of them in order to keep your flocks and herds um, reproducing. So I'm wondering if that's one of the reasons he did most of them as males, like male goats and 
and the bullocks and everything like that? Or did they have some that were also female? But I thought most of them said male. Yeah, so so yeah, there were some offerings that were given that were female. These particular offerings had to be male. The males were the most valuable, right? And remember, males produced, you know, after their kind. So the most pure, the most pure, blemishless, you know, the, the best. So these would be the most valuable. These would be the ones that would be worth dedicating and would be a sacrifice for the person giving it. So um, absolutely. Um, the the females uh, were not as valuable as the males at this point. So we looked at that back when we were going through um, Leviticus. All right, praise God. Let's um let's pick up. We are on day eight. Um, JP. Yeah, I I felt like. I, I think sister, I don't know if she has to correct me if I'm hearing her right, but it seemed that she was saying, because I know with like the sheep that we have, when we are purchasing sheep, the females are more valuable than the males because right. they're the ones who have the babies. So hmm. I don't know if that's what she was trying to say um, in this context of, as in like, that's why more males were getting used because they were able to be, like she said, you know, one one goat or one sheep can actually produce more, having more females and having like just two females and like five males. So I'm not sure if that's what she was trying to say, but I just want to just make sure she was kind of clear. I, I want to make sure that she was, uh, if that's what she was saying or not. Okay. So JP yeah, that, is the that advocate. That's what I was saying. <laughs> Um, I was wondering if, because the women are the ones that can reproduce, not that the males aren't, aren't worth more, but the females in the long run for other purposes will produce and the males are worth more for, for sacrifice for a different reason. Right, right, right. Yeah, when we looked at this um, back in Leviticus, um, we were able to find um, information regarding the value um, now, what that means today, um, you know, it can, it can also be true. You know, if you pay more um, when you go to purchase animals for the females and the males, you know, I don't know um, that that has direct correlation to what we're reading here, but um, I also could be wrong in that regard. So, you know, we'll continue to look. To, to make sure that we're accurate, you know, in understanding why a specific gender was offered. So I will take that challenge and look into that even more. And you guys do the same. We'll have more discussion about it. Praise God. Uh, Brother Paul. Shabbat shalom, brother. Um, shabbat. Yeah, I was watching a TV program in the UK. Um, it was an old um, motor. He's basically a presenter who's re who reviews cars, but um, he's got a thousand acre farm and um, he doesn't know anything about farming. But what they did, they said, you know, get some sheep. And he bought, I think he bought 60 sheep, but 58 of them were female and two were male. Mm -hmm. And I, I was looking, thinking, what? why you know and um the guy who brought the sheep he said these two will impregnate all of them within months uh, every every female will be impregnated by the two bulls and the two males and um you know it's just crazy like i couldn't believe uh, how um you know just the two of them left in the field like i, I thought they would pick a mate and stay with a mate or whatever but I believe they just, you know, reproduced dramatically like that. So I just want to add a little bit. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right. All right, let's um this this is gonna be more of the same. So let's um let's continue to read. We left off in verse 54. Um does anyone want to take it? If not, I will. And it can be rough because of the names, but um, 
who knows how they're actually pronounced. Go ahead, brother. I'll give it a go. Um, I'm reading the, the Restoration Scripture version. So, on the eighth Yom offered Gamaliel, the son of Padatsur, leader of the children of Menashe. His offering was one silver platter of weight of 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel of Kadosh place, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a grain offering. One golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the male goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of shalom offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Gamaliel, the son of Padatsur. Keep going, or? Um, yeah, read, read um, the ninth and the tenth day. On the ninth Yom, Avidan, the son of Gidona, Gidonai, leader of the children of Benjamin, offered his offering was one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels. After the shekel of the Kadosh place, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a grain offering. One golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering. One kid of the male goats for, for a sin offering and for a sacrifice of shalom offerings two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Avidan, the son of Gidone. On the 10th Yom, Ahiza, the son of Amishadai, leader of the children of Dan, offered his offering with one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the Kadosh place, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a grain offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bollock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the male goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of shalom offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, five lambs of the first year, this was the offering of Ahiza, the son of Amishadai. Yeah, so anything you see differently or stand out to you there? No, not really, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, absolutely not. So, all right, I'll, I'll finish out the chapter. Um, it does shift, um, obviously, as everything is added together. Uh, for the day of the dedication, but let's pick up on the 11th day. Um, on the 11th day, Pegiel, the son of Okran, leader of the children of Asher, presented an offering. His offering was one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, mixed with oil as a grain offering, one gold pan of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt mm -hmm. offering, one kid of the goats as a sin offering, and as a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs in their first year. This was the offering of Pegiel, the son of Okran. On the 12th day, Ahira, the son of Enan, leader of the children of Naphtali, presented an offering. His offering was one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering, one gold pan of 10 shekels, full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burn offering. 
one kid of the goats as a sin offering, as a sacrifice of the peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, five male lambs in their first year. This was the offering of a hero, the son of Enan. And finally, this was the dedication offering for the altar from the leaders of Israel when it was anointed, 12 silver platters, 12 silver bowls, 12 gold pans. Each silver platter weighed 130 shekels and each bowl 70 shekels. All the silver platters of the vessels weighed 2,400 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The 12 gold pans full of incense weighed 10 shekels apiece, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. All the gold of the pans weighed one, 120 shekels. All the oxen for the burnt offerings were 12 young bulls, the rams 12, the male lamb, lambs in their first year, 12, with the grain offering and the kids of the goats as a sin offering, 12, and all the oxen of the sacrifice of the peace offerings were 12 bulls, the rams 60, the male goats 60, the lambs in the first year 60. This was the dedication offering from the altar after it was anointed. Now, when Moses went into the tabernacle of meeting to speak with him, he heard the voice of one speaking to him from above the mercy seat. That was the ark of the testimony from between the two cherubim. Thus he spoke to him. So we see Yahuwah speaking to Moses from above the mercy seat after the dedication. And I'm sure with much pleasure. So, man, a lot of numbers, a lot of order, um, clear instruction, um, and, and a hint of Yahuwah taking great detail in marking and, and, and ledgering um, these offerings given by the people with their specific names of the tribes so all of the people would have record of their ancestors and what they did on this great day. So, um, Interesting chapter. Some some of us probably skipped over this in the past. Um, a lot of people don't see the value in understanding and reading through what the children did as they offered, as they as they were instructed to, um, the adherence to the directives, obedience to everything that Yah was telling them to do, um, and it also marks, you know. Um, for us, you know, the origin of the instructions and how we see Israel later on veer away from these things. You know, I think of, you know, we have Sukkot coming and I think of Nehemiah and Ezra, you know, and they're rebuilding and they're regaining and they're getting copies of Torah and of the prophets and they're reading to the people and how these chapters would would reestablish who all of these people who were gathered back to, what that would mean to them. So these are very, very important passages of scripture um, that we shouldn't count any less um, just because they're numbers of bowls and animals and sacrifices and offerings. So Yahuwah sees this chapter just as he looks at the book of Romans. Amen. Praise Yah. Sister Yahara. And then we'll close out. Yes, I, I apologize. I wasn't able to get my hand up in a timely fashion. Um, but just to, uh, pointing back to um, the whole question about uh, the value of male and female. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just um, something, another way to look at perhaps or give consideration to is... Um, rather than looking at it as a matter of value, but even practicality. And perhaps this is what Brother Paul was speaking to. Um, 
you know, in as much as, um, you know, the procreation, you know, it was, it was for the, the sake of bringing forth and, um, you know, bringing forth uh, the fruit of the womb. And so when, um, when a woman is impregnated or a female uh, of any type is impregnated, then she's not available for procreation for a, at least nine months. So for nine months, she's, she's not available. Um, and so there would be a, a need for more female than males. So as to even sustain, you know, that, that process of uh, procreation. Hmm. Just yeah, another, no. <laughs> another um, perspective. Yeah, absolutely not. We, you know, great insight you know we we you know you know give opportunity to be enlightened you know and to be and to be you know educated in 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 some areas i think the value you know of the way we study you know um and understanding absolution but also understanding the free and, and 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 seeing the freedom in understanding that some things that we that we read or try to understand are not solidified by what we actually know and 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 can be expounded or even um uh that's a good word expounded upon by the views of the people in our fellowship so you know we all always look to hear different perspectives, they're great. You know, we always have to make sure that those perspectives line up with what we read in scripture, but the different perspectives also help to better our understanding as it pertains to, to Yah's word. So I think what you said is, is very on point um, to the conversation of understanding the differences in the sacrifices and why the, 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 the uh, the genders are important and they're mentioned for a specific reason. I think Rick's question sparked all of these things. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna continue to look into them because I think we need to answer those questions because we're reading these things over and over, right? And we don't wanna just, you know, as we do with everything, we wanna understand why he said these things. And he said, search, seek, and ye shall find, ask. And I will show thee great and mighty things you know not of, right? That's our prayer continually. Um, so speaking of prayer, let's close in prayer. And then uh, we could talk a little bit before we close out, Father. So we know you've overheard all of these things. <sighs> and just reading through this chapter of, of what was seemingly meaningless at, 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 you know, in most of our readings in the past, you find great value. You have a necessity for us to know these things and understand these things and read these things as it pertains to the whole of your scripture and understanding it and understanding Israel and the world. So Father, we thank you for this opportunity to study together again. We pray for the, for the coming festivities of the day and we're just excited um, for what you're doing you know, in this particular assembly, Father. So keep your hands on us, continue to guide us. Those things that we still have questions about, please provide an answer as we seek to understand all of your word so that we're prepared to give an answer to all who ask what our faith is founded on. Father, so we thank you, we praise you, we lift up your holy name. Mighty name of Yahushua, we say hallelujah. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Toda roba. Praise Abba Yah from whom all Baraka flow. We hope this video encouraged you today. Don't forget to study to show yourself approved and be like the Bereans who tested everything. According to 2 Timothy 3.15 and Acts 17.11, we assemble every Shabbat and during the week with like-minded believers all over the world, virtually, and sometimes we gather in person for feast days. We have something for the whole family, including children. 
Discover more on our website at assemblyofyahuwah.com, where you can apply to join, give the biblical assembly needs, including our new land vision, and find many biblical resources to help you grow in your walk with Yah. To know when we publish new videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Jeremiah 33 3 tells us, Call to Yahuwah and He will answer you, and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Much shalom.